All right, uh, time to do a video on cast code amplifiers. Uh, some people were asking me questions if I would do a video on uh, cast codes, and I have before. Um, I did a video on cast code amplifiers in relation to optocouplers, speeding up optocouplers. So I'll put a link down below on that video. And uh, before I start my video, I want to point out a video that Alan W2AW did. I'll put a link down below. He did a really, really nice uh, video on cast code amplifiers uh, also. And um, I almost said, nah, don't look at my, you know, he already did one, so just, just look at his. I've, I've learned that a lot of people um, learn better by the way Alan teaches, and a lot of people learn better by the way I teaches. <laughs> I teaches, you like that? Um, anyway, uh, so I will go through this more, uh, less technical. All of my videos are supposed to be approachable by beginners and stuff, and so I'm gonna hand wave the cast code amplifier a little bit. The mathematics of calculating gain and stuff in cast code amplifiers is, is a bit complicated, um, but there are kind of some shortcuts and I'm gonna show those to you and kind of give you a seat of the pants uh, a look at what a cast code amplifier is. So this is a cast code amplifier. It has two transistors in it. They can be NPN transistors, they can be FETs. Um, there's all kinds of different ways to do, um, to do cast codes. Okay, before we do this one, Okay, we're gonna do this one. This is actually a copy of this with some parts removed. So we're gonna learn how this one works first, and then we're gonna go to the more complicated one, okay? So this is a common emitter amplifier. You do some DSC biasing and you set this transistor up and then you put some wiggles here and some wiggles come out here, okay? So we have to do two different things when we're looking at these amplifiers. We have to do a DC analysis and we have to do an AC analysis, okay? So the DC analysis of this thing is pretty simple. Uh, we have six volts in ground and we have a divider here and this is a, a two-thirds divider. So we have two-thirds of the voltage here. So that's four volts. So we have six volts here and we have, we have four volts here, okay? And then uh, we're going to go through a, you can imagine this is a, an emitter follower. So whatever voltage we have here, we're going to have the same voltage here minus a diode drop. And then that goes through this resistor to ground. And that's our DC path, okay? So we have four volts here. Maybe we have three and a half volts here. And we have three and a half volts across a 1.8K resistor. And that will set up some type of current, okay? And so um, let's go ahead and do a little bit of math here. Uh, things are always in the way on my bench. Just a second. Let's move over here so I have a flat surface to write on. Okay, so let's call this four volts, okay? And let's call this uh, 3.5 volts, okay? And we have uh, 3.5 volts and we have uh, 1800 ohms. And so we have uh, 1.95, okay? So we have two milliamps of current flow, okay? Uh, so do you, do you understand that? If you have four volts here, three and a half, three and a half across this, that sets up the current through this resistor. And whatever current this is, it's gonna be the current through the whole thing, okay? So we have, we have a, two, a two milliamp, okay? Now that's DC, okay? Now, when we take a look at the AC analysis, we have a, a little bit of wiggle. So think of the little bit of wiggle here. It goes through the um, transistor and it's gonna be amplified by the uh, beta of the transistor. So a little bit of wiggle here as a lot of wiggle here. A little bit of base current wiggle is a lot of emitter, bitter, emitter wiggle, okay? And uh, so when we have wiggle on this side, it's gonna wiggle across this um, resistor. So whatever wiggle we have here, that's a delta voltage. This uh, resistor, its sole purpose in life is to convert the current wiggle into a voltage wiggle. And then that comes out, that comes out the side. So this is our input, this is our output. Let's go ahead and hook this up and see how it works. Okay, so I have the circuit here and we'll be taking a look at it on the oscilloscope. Now my oscilloscope has a built-in uh, function generator. So we are going to be able to look at the uh, signal on the input and the signal on the output, okay? I also am gonna be measuring them directly. So we have the, um, 
yellow is the input and the blue is the output, okay? So let's turn off the output for right now. This is our input signal. Okay, so our input signal is uh, 30, 32 millivolts peak to peak, 32 millivolts, all right? So we're inputting a little bit. And then let's take a look at the output. And the output is about 742 uh, millivolts, okay? So we have a lot of gain. There's some phase shift also, we don't worry about that, uh, but we have, uh, we have gain, right? This is set to 10 millivolts per division. This is set to 200 millivolts per division. So they're not on the same scale. If we put this one on the same scale, okay, you can see that, let me move this, oops, move this, you can see the wiggle a little bit better. Okay, so a tiny bit of wibble, wiggle on the input, big wiggle on the output. All right, let's see how fast this thing can go. So we have, um, our input is the, uh, yellow and our output is the blue. So let's just get rid of our input. We're really only interested in the output. What does the output do? Looks like it has a little bit of distortion on it, but that's okay. All right, so we are going to increase the speed of our input. We're currently at 360 kilohertz, all right? And uh, I think we're overdriving the input here a little bit. I don't like that distortion. I have a little bit a little bit too much distortion. There we go. Let's put in 20 millivolts and then we don't have any distortion on the output. It looks much cleaner. All right, so let's go up here. Oops, right here, all right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set um, the gain of this channel so that the uh, sine wave, it goes plus or minus one division, okay? All right, so now I'm going to, oops, speed up the, uh, oops, went too far. Okay, I went too far. So this thing is not linear with, uh, all right. So I'm gonna speed up 100 kilohertz, 200 kilohertz. And we're just going to keep going until the oh, we're starting to get smaller now. I'm at two megahertz and we're getting smaller. Okay, so let's say right about there, right about 3.5 megahertz. Our output is about half of what it used to be. Okay, and we're just going to call that our a point of no return, okay? We, we can't live with less than half of our, half of our signal, okay? And that happens at 3.56 megahertz. Okay, now uh, let's change over to, uh, let's take a look at the piece of paper again. Now we are going to use this circuit instead. So this circuit adds this transistor, okay? So you can say, oh yeah, well, you're adding a second stage of gain. That should add, that should make it bigger, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, uh, change that over. And we'll change it, we'll change it live here. You can watch it, okay? So let's go back to, let's say, uh, 300 kilohertz. Uh, so we're full peak to peak, okay? I'm going to put in that second transistor, okay? And... It's right in now, all right? What happened to our gain? Our gain stayed exactly the same. Putting in that second transistor does not change the gain at all. So you can say, well, it doesn't change the gain at all, then why bother? Why would you, why would you put in a second transistor? Well, let me show you, okay? Let's do that speed up thing again. Let's see how fast we can go with this setup, all right? Such that it goes to about half of its, uh, half of its initial half of its initial, uh, right about there maybe. Now where is it? 6.4 megahertz, okay? It's much, much faster, all right? It's at least twice as fast um, as the, uh, as with no transistor, okay? So that's why you use a cascode amplifier because it can go faster, all right? And why does it go faster? Okay, so let's talk about why it goes faster, okay. We had this one and it operated up to around three megahertz, 
and it kind of stopped. What's the limiting factor? We're using the same transistor in both cases, so the transistor's not the slow part. What, what's the slow part? There's something called the Miller capacitance, and every transistor has a capacitor right here. It's, it's inside the, the, the transistor. It's just part of, part of being a transistor. It has this Miller capacitor. And this capacitor gives you negative feedback. So as this thing goes faster and faster and faster, this thing feeds back and kind of kills its input. And so this slows you down. This Miller capacitor slows you down. So you can buy better transistors that have less Miller capacitance. Okay, that's the thing to do. Uh, but we didn't do that in this case. We just added a transistor. Well, okay, but this one has a Miller capacitor. That one has a Miller capacitor. Now we have twice as many capacitors. It shouldn't get any faster, okay? All right, so let's think about this capacitor again in here. Right, here's our Miller capacitor. All right, and that's because when this wiggles, this wiggles out of phase, and, and that out of phase wiggle comes back and, and cancels out the input. So that's that, this is this negative feedback, okay? So if the output didn't wiggle, then there'd be nothing to feed back, right? Well, what does the second transistor do? Well, the second transistor sets up a voltage, okay? Uh, let's say that we have uh, 6 volts here, okay, we have, let's say this is 12 volts, 12 volts. We have 15K, 5K, and, and 10K, so this is 15K, this is 15K, so this could divide by 2. So we have 6 volts here, okay, and then we have about 4 volts here, okay, and so, um, we already talked about this, this much of the circuit with six volts. That's why you chose six volts here because of this thing, okay? We have a capacitor here, so this stays a nice rock solid six volts. Well, what does this transistor do with a DC? There's no AC here. There's a DC six volts. What does it do? Well, it puts about five and a half volts right here. It's an emitter follower. And this voltage here is solid. Okay? It doesn't wiggle. This, this voltage does not wiggle. Well, then you say, well, then the whole thing can't work. No, the uh, current can wiggle. Remember, the current wiggles and this uh, uh, resistor, the entire job of this resistor is to convert the, the current wiggles into a voltage wiggle, okay? We still have current wiggles. We just don't have any voltage wiggle. And because we don't have any voltage wiggle here, there's nothing to feed back around. And you basically remove the problem with this, uh, with this Miller uh, capacitor here, okay? And again, you don't have much wiggle here. Um, the, you, have, you have a little bit, but you don't have as much. And so you're, you're reducing everything by having this, uh, this second, this second uh, transistor in there, okay? So that's the whole CAS code uh, magic. The whole CAS code magic is to make sure that the collector does not move. You do not want the collector to move. And by adding this emitter follower in there, that speeds things up by a factor of two, we saw. Um, so, um, like I said, these uh, cast code amplifiers can be made with FETs, okay? So you could, have, you could have two FETs, and you could hold this one at some voltage, and then you could have this one AC coupled, and uh, it would do the same thing. This, this point here would not wiggle, all right? So this works. Um, you can actually buy this in a package, okay? There are things called dual uh, dual gate FETs, okay? And they, they look like this. They're fairly popular in VHF, UHF circuits and stuff. They have two, they have two FETs. I mean, uh, it's like having two FETs, but it's built all on one substrate. You have two gates, but just one FET. But it acts like this, okay? And so again, you could take this one, you could tie it to some DC voltage, and then you could input the, uh, the signal here. And basically, you have a CAS code amplifier in all in one package, okay? And so, like I said, these are very, very popular. All right, um, I think that's enough for CAS code amplifiers. There's a whole, there's a whole lot of uh, math that you could go into and stuff, but uh, that's out of, outside of my, uh, my comfort zone and, and the, what I want to teach here on my channel. So. Yeah, there we go. Cast code amplifiers and why they're faster.